Hello and welcome back to this series on Spacey and NER or named entity recognition for the purpose of the digital humanities. In the last few videos, we've been looking at how to build a named entity recognition pipeline for the Holocaust, beginning with this video and moving forward. Now that we have the, the basic components of the knowledge necessary, we're going to start building a um, Holocaust NER pipeline from the ground up. And we're going to do this with a combination of rules based methods. Uh, utilizing existing off-the-shelf uh, models from Spacey and training our own custom models. As we're going to see, creating a custom pipeline is never just as simple as creating one model to do a whole bunch of tasks. Instead, it's really good to think about all these tasks as individual components in a pipeline and developing tools to handle each individual component. That's what we're going to start doing in this video. So like in the last video, we're going to import Spacey, but we're also going to import another significant uh, class from Spacey. We're going to say from Spacey.tokens, and we're going to import the span class. And you're going to see why that's essential in this video in just a few minutes. Much like the last video, we're going to start off with a main NLP object. And this is going to be just simply uh, Spacey.load, uh, sorry, Spacey.blank English. And this is going to allow us to create an EN or an English blank model. Now, our goal in this video is going to be kind of building off of what we saw in the last video. Our goal is to get the English core web small model from Spacey, um, retrieve the NER component, so the named entity recognition component, to load it into our blank Spacey model, like we saw in the last video. But we're going to do something very important in this video. We're going to just use that model for just identifying dates, locations, and NORPs, uh, national or religious political entities. The reason for this is because while the blank space or while the small spacing model is very good at identifying things like dates and locations and uh, NORPs, it struggles really, really um, a lot with uh, Eastern European and Slavic names. Um, it'll struggle still with locations, but it'll oftentimes misidentify them as organizations. And so for all these reasons, we don't want to grab all 18 labels from that spacey model. We want to limit it to just a few that we find useful. And the reason why this is important is because, like I said for the past few videos, getting a model to understand multiple entities is relatively difficult and requires a lot of training data. Getting a model to recognize several entities is a lot easier. And if you're just doing one or two entities, it's even easier than that. So by getting using the Spacey English model to actually handle a lot of our um, common things that are easy to find with it, such as dates and locations and NORPs, we're going to drastically limit how much we actually have to train into this model with custom machine learning pipes and this pipeline. Now, if you don't understand what all that means, you're going to by the end of this video. So let's go ahead and make, like I said, a new object. And this is going to designate our English NLP. And we're going to do spacey.load. And we're going to load in that N core web SM. That's the small model in spacey. We're going to, like we saw in the last video, grab the NER pipe from it. Sorry, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do English. NER is going to be equal to um, English dot uh, underscore NLP dot get pipe. And we're going to grab the NER component. Once we have that as an object, we're going to simply add it to our main underscore NLP dot add pipe. And that's going to allow us to add it, add the NER into that pipeline. And we're going to call it a special name. It's simply going to be the E DLN. That's going to tell us that it stands for dates, locations, and uh, NORPs, N-O-R-P. What we're going to have to do, though, is now limit that this model can only grab these three items. So how do we do that? Well, we need to create a special component in the pipeline. We need to create a special pipe. This sounds a lot more difficult than it actually is. Creating the pipe and adding it to the pipeline is actually very easy. The difficulty is going to be come into how we save the model and import that custom pipe into the Spacey factories. I'm going to address that at the end of this series when we start taking our model and packaging it. For right now, I want you to just focus on creating a function to perform a task on the doc object, returning the doc object, and adding that component into the pipeline. We're going to do that just the same way that we would do any other uh, task. 
before we move forward, let me go ahead and just demonstrate a little bit about how this is going to work for the rest of the video. So here we have a sample text. We have the doc object being created by the main NLP. And the main NLP now at this stage in the script has the custom NER from the English Core Web Small Model. And we're just going to print off the entities from that. All of this should be somewhat familiar to you. And it looks like we've got an error. I just called that the wrong name, English underscore NER. It should work now. And if you notice down here, we've got the English NER grabbing date here, event here, which is World War II, uh, Treblinka, organization, like I said. It's misidentifying uh, these locations in Eastern Europe as organizations. And we see Poland being correctly identified as a GPE and Meyer Bornstein being correctly identified as a person as well. So our goal right now is to get this output to look differently. We want this output to only grab the date, the date, Poland, and uh, that'll be it, it looks like. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do this by creating a special function that we're then going to add as a custom pipeline. So let's call this function English Narrow. English Narrow is going to take one object. It's going to be the doc, the doc object that is passed through the NER pipeline. Then we're going to create an object called labels. These are going to be the labels that we want that object to retain. So we want to retain the date, the GPE, and the NORP. That's going to be the only three things that we want this to actually grab for us. Next, we are going to do ENS is going to be equal to an empty list. L is going to be equal to an empty list. And then we're going to iterate over the doc object. For int and doc.ints, let's just print off uh, int.text and dot, uh, dot label. And this is going to allow me to kind of demonstrate how this function is working. And to do that, I am simply going to um, leave that, uh, I'll leave that as is. So let's go ahead and just comment this out and run this as is. And then I have to add this function to the pipeline. So I'm going to say main underscore NLP dot add pipe. And this is what's really cool is that to add a custom function to a spacey pipeline only requires you, you can actually add in custom functions or classes if you want. So we're going to say name is going to be equal to, we're going to call this E narrow. And we're going to tell it that we want it to come after the e un, en underscore DLN. And now when we run this, we should have a very similar output, except we get an error. In narrow does not work. And why is this not working? Well, if you read the value error, you'll see why. We have not returned the doc object. This is a very common error to have, and it's one that's really easy to recognize and really easy to resolve. Again, think about what's happening in the pipeline. The data, the doc object is going in through this component. It's coming out with these entities now marked up. It's going now into our custom function. And then what's not happening? It's not able to get out of our function. In other words, the doc object enters this component of the pipeline, this pipe, and it gets stuck. And the reason why it gets stuck is because we haven't returned it. When we return it, we'll see that that error goes away. And now, as you can see, it's working, except I haven't really done anything yet. All I've done is I've just had it print off. And if you notice, I've commented this out. This demonstrates how the pipeline is working. The doc object is entering the pipeline. It's going through here. It's being, this task is being performed and then it's exiting. So in other words, I don't actually have to print off any of these entities here, but that's not how we do things. We need to actually do something. We want to drastically limit what is being stored. So. This is going to be just for my own sake. Uh, let's say, let's call this old int. This isn't necessary just so that I, when I look at this, can actually understand what's the old entity and what's the new entity that's going on. And this is going to be where we call in our span class that we imported up here, the span class from spacey.tokens. We're going to say span is going to be doc old int start old uh, int end and label. And we're going to take this all in and we're going to try and get it to adjust these things uh, as we go through. So one of the things that I want to do is I don't want to have this GPE tag 
in here. I want GPE to just be registered as location. And the reason for that's going to become a bit more clear when we start adding Eastern European models into the mix. But the reason for, for this is going to be because as we go through and work with spacey models that are trained with different labels, uh, you're going to find that location will have a different thing. Like in the Polish model, it's um, it's label person, label place, etc. Uh, we want everything to be the same label. So let's go ahead and start doing this. We're going to say if int.label is equal to date, then what we want to do is we want to say l.append int. So it's going to append this l object right here. Lf, so or if int.label equals gpe, Here's where we're going to want to change this. We're going to say new int is equal to the span doc old int start. It's going to grab all that same data and we're going to change this label to something else. We're going to change it to location. And then what we're going to do is l.append new int. And that's going to append this object into there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say lf int.label equals nor we could have added this up here as well but sometimes being a little extra verbose is, is is a little nice when you're doing these kinds of things and so we're going to say elif int uh, dot label underscore equals norp we're going to just go ahead and append that now what what do you think will happen if i run this the answer well it's actually going to be nothing because i haven't printed anything off here We're going to append old end, old end. If I run this, we're not going to have anything change. Old end is not defined. What did I do incorrectly? Old end is not defined. If, oh, here we go. There we are. If old end, there we go. Now it should work fine. If I run this, though, nothing is actually going to change. We're going to see the exact same entities being reported. Why is that? The reason is because while we've gone through and done some modifications on the data and created this new list, we haven't actually changed the doc object yet. So what we have to do is we have to say L is going to be equal to tuple of L. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say doc.ints is going to be equal to L. And that's going to take the doc object and completely change it into this piece, this bit of data that we want it to show, this new kind of data. Now when we go through, what we should see is Poland registered not as a GPE, but as a location. And we should only see uh, dates, locations, and NORPs reported. Fantastic. And it works the way we wanted it to see. So what have we done here? Well, we've created a custom function that is able to take in the doc object. We've given it a set of labels that we want to actually see. Line 18, actually, now that I'm looking at it, doesn't really do anything. You can probably delete that and will be just fine. Uh, we're creating an empty list, and then we're iterating the over the doc object entities, just like we do for printing. We're iterating over them, though, and we're adding only the ones that we want back into this custom list, and we're changing the ones that we want to keep that have things like GPE that we want to standardize to just location. We're standardizing them, and we're adding them back to this empty list, and then here, we are changing the doc.ints. To demonstrate this a little further, let's print off doc.ints here and print off doc.ints here. And I'm going to comment this out and you'll see two different lists. So here you see the doc.ints being uh, prior to alteration. And here you see the doc.ints after alteration. So what this function has successfully done is it has gone in and altered the entities that are being stored. Now, as these spans are being passed down our pipeline, we do not have to worry about entities having already been labeled. Remember, in a prior video, we saw that, um, that pipes that come earlier in a pipeline affect what later pipes receive. Because these entities are not going to be marked, it's going to allow for later items in the pipeline to correctly identify things um, as we see fit. 
That's going to be it for this video though. Again, if you try to save this model right now, it is not going to work. It will fail, and the reason is because we don't have any updated factories in Spacey. That's going to be the last step that you do when you package this. Again, that's going to be all for this video though. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below. And the next video, we're going to start tackling a new problem. How do we get uh, the Eastern European models to identify better or use them to identify people?